hi. Um, last week we talked about the genitofemoral nerve, so I am almost bursting at the seams because we have to talk about the ilioinguinal nerve as well. I nearly disappeared off on a different tangent, but they're, they're such similar nerves that we really should talk about the ilioinguinal nerve. I mentioned it with the genitofemoral nerve video, and likewise, I'm going to talk about the genitofemoral nerve when I'm talking about the ilioinguinal nerve. Ilioinguinal nerve, what am I on about? All right, so ilium refers to the bone of the flank, this here. Inguinal refers to the groin. So this is the nerve of the... So that tells you what it does. So we will look at its jobs. It has sensory jobs and motor jobs. And we will look at where it comes from. It comes from the lumbar plexus. We will follow its route, which is different to the genitofemoral nerve, but it is involved with the inguinal canal. So we'll see how it's involved with the inguinal canal. And then we'll be there at its target structures and we'll chuck in some clinical doodads at the end. All right. You can tell when we're like, post exams because I'm actually able to use the anatomy lab to record in. No students in here. The rest of the year, busy with students. Anyway, ilioinguinal nerve. Okay, so um, its sensory job is to carry sensory information from the skin of the, like the upper medial thigh. And we mean really, really upper, not like upper, upper, but up here. So mons pubis in the female, this region here. Um, so upper medial thigh skin, sensory information is carried by the ilioinguinal nerve. And then in the male, there is the scrotum. So the ilioinguinal nerve is responsible for carrying sensory innovation back from the anterior scrotum and the root of the penis, like the, yeah. And in the female then, the female equivalent is the ilioinguinal nerve carries sensory information back from the anterior labia majora, often described as the anterior third of the labia majora and the root of the clitoris. The motor jobs then are the abdominal wall, the anterolateral abdominal wall has got like three muscle layers around here, right? And then abdominus rectus in the middle. So around here we have transversus abdominis and the internal oblique muscle. Those get some innovation from the ilioinguinal nerve when it passes between them. Some clues as to its root here, but um, not the external oblique muscle. So. These muscles here, so the internal oblique muscle and the transversus abdominis muscle, these muscles forming the wall, are innervated by multiple nerves. Some of, because they're big flat sheets of muscle, right? Some of the transversus abdominis muscle and some of the internal oblique muscle down here are innervated with, by the ilioinguinal nerve as it passes by. Okay. The ilioinguinal nerve comes from the lower back. So the lower vertebrae are the lumbar vertebrae, five, four, three, two, one. And there are spinal nerves leaving from between these vertebrae. So if this is the L1 vertebra, the first lumbar vertebra, the nerve leaving from here is the L1 spinal nerve and it's the L1 spinal nerve, the ventral ramus, like the anterior branches of that, that the ilioinguinal nerve will come from most of the time. Um, let me grab a thing. This is what I'm talking about. These are the lumbar vertebrae. These are the spinal nerve roots. And these are forming, in this case, the lumbar plexus, the, the meshwork of nerves that come together and then form other nerves that are gonna run off to the lower limb, pelvis, abdomen, that sort of thing. So the L5, L4, L3, L2, L1. So the L1 spinal nerve root will form the ilioinguinal nerve in most cases, but in, in some cases, somewhat often, the ilioinguinal nerve will also receive neurons from the T12 spinal nerve root or the L2 spinal nerve root. So we're already starting to see a bit of variability. Okay, so this then is very deep in the back. Let's put some muscles on there and see how these nerves appear, all right? Posterior abdominal wall. 
we can see one of the lumbar vertebrae here. So these muscles and blood vessels and what have you are covering up the lumbar vertebrae that we were just looking at. They're covering up the lumbar spinal nerves that we were just looking at. This muscle here is psoas major. This muscle here, flat one, largely hidden by the kidney, is quadratus lumborum. This muscle here is iliacus, covering the, the wing of the ilium, that bone of the pelvis there. Um, so these two muscles are going to run across the hip to the femur. This muscle is running from the pelvis to the lumbar vertebrae. The um, ilioinguinal nerve then is posterior to psoas major and will appear from its lateral border and run across anteriorly to the quadratus lumborum muscle. It's then going to curve around the abdominal wall, probably going to pass anterior to iliacus and it's going it's to run around. Now the three muscle layers that you can see here are the deepest layer is transversus abdominis, the middle layer is the internal oblique muscle layer and the outermost layer is the external oblique muscle layer. And this makes a nice strong muscular wall to hold everything in with. Now as the nerve runs around here, so here is the last bit of the bone. You can, you can palpate the iliac crest, the bony bit here. So the, remember, the iliacus muscle is covering the bone of the ilium. So as the ilioinguinal nerve passes the ilium, it will then penetrate, it will pass through transversus abdominis. So then it's in the layer, it's in the space between transversus abdominis and internal oblique muscles. And then it will penetrate through the internal oblique muscle. And this here, is the inguinal canal and the ilioinguinal nerve will pass into the inguinal canal but not by the route that you might expect it's not going to pass through the um, so the inguinal canal links the contents of the scrotum with the abdominal pelvic cavity right it's a it's a canal running through uh, the abdominal wall formed by largely the external oblique muscle kind of doing a little curvy thing and the other muscles getting involved in things like that. So it has an, a deep inguinal ring, like a deep opening to the inguinal canal and then things can pass into it and then it has a superficial opening, a superficial inguinal ring which things can pass out into the scrotum through. Now the ilioinguinal nerve doesn't pass into the inguinal canal by going into the deep inguinal ring. No, it pierces through. It pierces through the internal oblique muscle to get into the inguinal canal because the internal oblique muscle is forming, it's actually forming kind of part of the roof of the inguinal canal. So the ilioinguinal nerve will pass into the inguinal canal by penetrating, passing through the internal oblique muscle. Then it's within the inguinal canal, passes along the inguinal, inguinal canal in the case of the male with the spermatic cord, in the case of the female with the round ligament, and then will leave the inguinal canal through the superficial inguinal ring. So at that point where the nerve is passing through and with the transversus abdominis and internal oblique muscles, that's the region of those muscles that are innervated by the ilioinguinal nerve. And then when it leaves the inguinal canal and becomes more superficial, now it can start sending branches to the skin of this region. So do you see how high we are here? So the skin of the proximal medial thigh or the superior medial thigh and the mons pubis, this is how that skin gets its sensory innervation sent by the ilioinguinal nerve back to the spinal cord, right? The ilioinguinal nerve then will end by giving off anterior scrotal branches or anterior labial branches to the skin of those regions and carry the sensory innervation back from the skin of the anterior scrotum or anterior labia majora, depending upon the gender. 
one other important job here, um, the cremasteric reflex. So the, the scrotum has cremaster muscle within it and the cremaster muscle can pull the testes closer to the body or relax and let the testes hang further away from the body. And that's important in the thermoregulation of the testes and temperature lower than core body temperature is important for spermatogenesis. So the cremasteric reflex um, occurs when the medial thigh is stroked, is rubbed, and it causes the cremaster muscle on that same side to contract. The ilioinguinal nerve then is normally the nerve that carries the sensory limb of the cremasteric reflex because it carries sensory innervation back from the skin here, right? That's the afferent limb, the sensory limb. The genitofemoral nerve sends a genital branch to the cremaster muscle and is the motor limb of the cremasteric reflex. That's the efferent limb, right? So the ilioinguinal nerve and the genitofemoral nerve are the two parts of the cremasteric reflex. Normally, most of the time. All right. So now you know the route that the nerve takes and because of its involvement with the anterior abdominal wall muscles and the inguinal canal, it may be clear to you that the greatest risk to this nerve is during abdominal surgery. So incisions that need to be made low on the anterior abdominal wall for accessing all sorts of things around here, but for example, uh, inguinal hernia repair. And then when we looked at the genitofemoral nerve, we saw that that nerve had the same problem because it also runs through the inguinal canal, it takes a different route, it's a bit more direct, whereas this one goes all the way around. Um, so then if the ilioinguinal nerve is damaged or entrapped, then that might cause neuralgia, pain as a result of that nerve being damaged. So the pain then would be sent, would be felt low in the groin and in this medial thigh region, which is very similar to pain felt from damage to the genitofemoral nerve. Um, also, both of these nerves are coming from the lumbar plexus. So damage to the root of the nerve in the lumbar vertebrae, lumbar fracture, lumbar surgery, um, prolapse disc, you know, that sort of thing. So, so lumbar pathology, compressing or damaging the nerve at its root can cause similar sensation of pain, low in the groin and in the upper thigh. So it can be really difficult to work out which nerve is causing the problem. Also, you might have paresthesia. So, you know, altered sensation, pins and needles, burning sensations, numbness, those sorts of things, right? If the nerve has been injured, severed, crushed, Depends what's happened. So, um, as I said in the genitofemoral nerve talk, um, when I've chatted to um, anaesthetists, ultrasound guided anaesthetic block of one nerve or the other can be helpful in working out which nerve is causing the problem. Anyway, so now you know that the route that the nerve takes, so extension of the back can pull on the nerve flexion of the hip, uh, walking around, um, because of the involvement of these muscles and that nerve, they can all bring on the pain of um, the ilioinguinal nerve injury. But there you go, the anatomy of the ilioinguinal nerve. Its root is from the L1 spinal nerve, although it may also receive roots from the T12 and or L2 spinal nerve roots. Its root with a R-O-U-T-E is to pop out posterior to psoas major across quadratus lumborum around iliacus, pierces through transversus abdominis, through internal oblique, into the inguinal canal, through the inguinal canal, and into the scrotum or labia majora, innervating the muscles as it goes past the ones of the abdominal wall, that is the anterior abdominal wall, innervating the skin that it goes past, innervating the anterior scrotum or anterior labia majora. All right. Again, I know it seems like one of those little finicky bits of anatomy, but it, 
it's one of those nerves that gets injured. It's one of those nerves you need to know about as a surgeon, or if you're talking to a patient after abdominal wall surgery, you need to be aware of this anatomy so you can work out uh, what's going on. Because that's anatomy, right? Describes what's going on. <laughs> okay. Uh, mm, there is another little nerve nearby as well. Maybe I'll have to do that one next week. Or maybe I'll do something more interesting. See you next week. <laughs>